Good evening. I'm going to be brief because the evening's going on and, you know, us baby boomers and my baby boomer glasses have got to get home to bed and almost past my bedtime already. Um, I'm not going to go through all the, the stats again. It's been said, you know, we all know it's an ageing society globally that we're living in. In fact, someone once told me that two-thirds of all the people in the history of the world who have ever been 65 are alive today. Amazing. I don't know how they work that out. But, um, and in the UK, you know, we, we're facing a situation that uh, in eight years' time, 2020, 50% uh, of the adult population is going to be over 50. So um, I'm not doing PowerPoint. I've used my own visual aids. This first one was the way it was. Nice and tidy. A bunch of young people at the bottom all working away, supporting an older group at the top of the pyramid. And it really worked well because all the ratios were right, etc. Fortunately, that's the way it is. So we've got a smaller group of young people at the bottom of the inverted pyramid, middle-aged group in the middle, and we've got a big bunch of old people at the top. And very often I've been asked to do an impromptu presentation, and I've used just these two slides. Uh, because to me, that says it all. Uh, this is history. Go on. And if you look at this, it doesn't matter what you do, what your occupation is, what stage you are on the process going through uh, your career, whatever, it has enormous implications for us all. Pensions, how long we're going to have to work, uh, how are we going to fund our retirement, will we have to dip into the equity in our and our property, equity release, I predict, will become a must-have product for many in the years to come. Um, so it enorm has enormous uh, implications for all of us. That is the way it is. Um, and given we accept that that's the way it is, how do we communicate with them? Um, the WHO once wrote, you know, hope I die before I get old. Well, for many people, that's going to be a pretty prophetic uh, prediction. Um, developed nations, aren't, uh, UK, America, developed nations got, old, got rich before they got old. Underdeveloped nations are getting old before they get rich. But the same thing's happening globally. There are going to be more people over the age of 65 um, than under... 16 in 30 years' time. Um, and to give you another example, someone mentioned earlier aging in Japan. I think it was David Sinclair. Um, sales of nappies or diapers for the Americans in the audience uh, in Japan are now for the first time sales of nappies for adults are outstripping those for children. It's a fascinating statistic. Um, but it kind of sums up what this is all about. So, having said that, and, and David earlier made a couple of points here, that despite the numbers, despite the demographics, that, that you can't argue with, it's not an opinion, these are the facts, we're getting older, the society is getting older, most marketing and communications are still youth-centric. And I often wonder why. One of the reasons, I think, is because most marketing, advertising, is produced by people who are under the age of 30. And I believe, and I'm not just saying this because I'm an old fart, I'm 61 years old and I'm a grandfather, but I believe that a 28-year-old or a 25-year-old can't think 55 or 65. It is impossible. I'm not saying they can't write copy that will, uh, that will appeal to that audience. 
they have to have some direction, because I've been there and I've, I've worked with young designers and young writers. Um, but they can't think that age, and therefore sometimes it's difficult for them to communicate or to write copy that convinces people of that age group. Older people hear differently too, and it's not just to do with, you know, he, their hearing deteriorating, there is that, but they hear different things. I mean, Cicero once said, if you wish to communicate with me, uh, think my thoughts, feel my feelings, speak my language. You have got to get on that wavelength. And to quote somebody else from history, Aristotle said once that if horses had gods, uh, their gods would look like horses. So people produce communications in their own image and likeness. And, and I, I, I think until, I, I don't know what the answer is to that, actually, because I think, uh, you know, you, you look at advertising out there and it, it, it is still, sadly, most of it is youth-centric. I, I saw a poster once for a Ford Fiesta or a 48 sheet uh, hoarding. And now, I don't know who buys new Ford Fiestas? I know that young people don't buy new cars. 61% of new cars are bought by people over the age of 50. That's Ford's own figures. So I don't know who buys Ford Fiestas new, but I'm thinking maybe the district nurse, the local headmistress. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm wrong going down that route. But anyway, I know it isn't 17 to 25-year-old boys. The headline for this new Ford Fiesta was sinew gripping stuff. I ask you, why? You know, it just doesn't make sense. And, and why do Ford, of all people, allow such nonsense to happen? Ford actually produced some great commercials a few years ago, some of you may remember, uh, where it was for the, the Ford Puma, and they used footage of, uh, of Steve McQueen from Bullet which they morphed from the original movie into the present day Puma. And it had all the, the, the music from the film Bullet and had Steve McQueen and it was all the right stuff. And the people, you know, my age who buy new cars like that, I, I ticked all the boxes, it identified with everybody, you know, the Steve McQueen icon from the 60s, da, 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 da. all of it was just right. I was chairing a conference a few years ago and I had a, one of my speakers was a guy from Ford and I said to him over lunch, why is it that you can produce great advertising like those Puma commercials, because they also use Dennis Hopper as well, Steve McQueen, and then you produce something like sinew gripping stuff for the Ford Fiesta and he said, Kevin, the answer is very, very simple. The only way those Puma commercials got made was because the guy in charge of that mark was 55 and he pushed it through personally against a lot of facility. And he said, otherwise, as a corp global corporate entity, we revert, we reset to youth. That's our corporate culture. And he said, and that's why there are so few examples of relevant advertising for the age group who are buying our product. It is absolutely bizarre and astonishing, but it's true. So, um, you don't target by age alone. I, I just want to make a point about this. We all talk in these forums about the over 50s, the over 55, over 60s. There are many shades of grey. We know that. And it's all to do with attitude lifestyle, life stage, rather than chronological age. Uh, so I would say in, you know, age-old university challenge fashion, age is the starter for 10. It's much more about other things. I mean, I know 55s who are going on 35. I know 55s who are going on 85 in their head. Um, so it, age is a good place to start, but it's not the be-all and end-all. Um, Age sometimes does give you a good handle on, uh, what should I say, nostalgia sometimes gives you an angle. And I'm not saying nostalgia works in every campaign, but I want to show you something here, um, which is this one slide.
This was a campaign that we produced many, many years ago, about 15 years ago, for a company called NPI. They were lately, uh, re more recently taken over by Pearl and AMP, which is an Australian financial services company. Now, this was for an equity release product, um, which for, for those of you who are not familiar with equity releases, where you can release some of the value of your home and you don't pay anything back until you die. Simple proposition. The, the brief here to us was to target 70, you had to be 70 plus and a homeowner living in England and Wales. So this was 10 or 15 years ago. So those people we're targeting now end up well into their 80s. And we thought, what is it that most people of that generation will remember, given the nature of the product? And we thought rationing, because they would have all had a ration book in the war. Everybody had one. Supposedly the king had one, and whether he, you know. But they all had a ration book. And so the whole premise of this campaign was retirement needn't be a return to rationing, because with our equity release scheme, you can release funds and enjoy yourself going forward. It was phenomenally successful. It, it's won more awards in financial services advertising than anything else. And the astonishing thing was that when we put the campaign together, and I was creative director on it, we had to go to a museum in Bradford to get a copy, make a copy of a ration book so we could reproduce it for the, for the mailing. When the campaign broke, and it was direct mail only, at this stage, the, uh, the client got sent in hundreds of ration books and also about 150 gas masks where people wrote in and said, we found this in the loft, you reminded of us, us of the wartime years and da 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 da. It suddenly, the, 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 it was just amazing what we tapped into. So I, I love to keep this because it's a great example of how you can make nostalgia work. Other people trying to target people like me, creative people, you know, trying to target people like me, sometimes go back to the 60s and show me as I perhaps was as a, a lad growing up with long hair and the bell bottoms and all the rest of it. And I think if I see another picture like that, I'm going to just, you know, throw up because that is not the only answer. I mean, everybody didn't want to go to Woodstock. I mean, a 50 year old today was only eight when Woodstock was around, you know. So, I mean, there are so many assumptions made which um, uh, are untrue. I'm going to finish because I want to read you something from uh, a book, but many shades of grey, communications must be inclusive, not exclusive. That will bring in all ages. It's the same as design. Uh, relevance is key. Content is king. And remember, old is the generation above them, whatever their age. So there's never an old. Um, now the plug. Uh, this was something I put together last year, which is called the New Millennium Tales. The style and tone based on Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. And it's a collection of baby boomer marketing stories by a variety of the great and the good and so on. And I just want to read you, because it's kind of spooky. But I just want to read you. Uh, the, opening chap uh, the opening paragraph or two from The Historian's Tale, written by a friend of mine, Leon Kreitzman. And he says, in Canterbury Tales, Chaucer was writing at a time when the world was going through rapid and profound social change. In the middle decades of the 14th century, just a generation earlier, the Black Death had swept through Europe and destroyed a third of the population. It had selectively killed younger people, the result was societies in which the absence of young men and women meant that fields were neither ploughed, planted, or harvested. Buildings, villages, and towns decayed, and surviving older people often formed themselves into self-help communes to survive as best they could in the harsh environment, a somewhat rawer version of today's gated retirement villages. Religion was questioned, feudalism was challenged, peasants moved from the country to the town it took Europe over 400 years to recover. Chaucer's time was the first version of an Asian society, aging society, and it was not a pretty picture. We are now living through aging society 2.0. <laughs> the current transition is due to reduced fertility 
and increased life expectancy. So I just thought that that was relevant. I, didn't, I couldn't even remember that was in the book, but it just seemed to be uh, apt for this evening. And on that, ladies and gentlemen, I finish. Thanks,